Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to uh, lecture number 2. We would continue where we have left in our lecture 1. We have started talking about material degradation and where we have seen that uh, we would look at uh, the chemical or electrochemical root uh, of material degradation, where uh, there could be combination of mechanical action as well as uh, there could be combination of heat or radiation. Now, if we come to this slide, if you see this slide, here it says that the material degradation can be defined in terms of loss of performance of an engineering system. Of course, loss of performance, uh, it can be due to material loss, due to loss of, loss of color, due to loss of aesthetics, many aspects. Now, loss of performance can be related to many other parameters such as loss of reflectivity in optical equipment due to fungal attack. This is also degradation and once it happens then of course, we have to throw that for example, camera lenses. Loss of mechanical strength of a structural component exposed to corrosive medium. This of course, we will attack this particular situation uh, in our next series of lectures. Wear can increase the clearance between piston ring and cylinder, hence incomplete combustion of compression gas. This is also loss of performance. Now, we would not look at wear, but of course, the part of wear will be taken along with corrosion. In case of erosion corrosion, we will take wear plus corrosion. Loss of efficiency of course, once uh, we have corrosion related damage, we do lose efficiency of that machine. Loss of lifetime, this is natural. Once we have a degradation in the form of corrosion, that means the loss of materials, then of course, we have to replace that particular material prior to its usual time duration. And of course, lastly extensive control component this is this adds to the cost of that particular corrosion. Now, if we come to see the uh, reasons or phenomena that can cause material degradation, there could be anything which are available in environment, because every time any material we have to expose it to the environment for our purpose. Like heat, light, short wavelength, electromagnetic radiation, radioactive emission, chemical, mechanical stress and interactions with bacteria, fungi or other life forms. So, all these factors, they will be the reasons for some way or other a material degradation. Hence, the classification of material degradation according to its basic cause is a first step in any plan to protect a specific material in a specific situation. That is what we have been talking about. Now, coming to materials and environments, interesting if I see materials, then first thing what it comes to a material scientist is basically the material tetrahedron. And in the material tetrahedron, you will see for example, if I draw a material tetrahedron, this is a kind of material tetrahedron. We see where structure is one side, then processing, then performance, and then properties. Now, of course, when we talk about this material tetrahedron, in the structure, we can also have one other more criteria which is called composition. 
Now, for a particular composition, the structure, properties, performance, processing, all are interrelated. So, this is a classic material tetrahedron. Now, if I come to this particular picture, this particular picture, this material tetrahedron, we have made some material for performing some duties. For example, uh, some cases we need to hold a particular load, some cases we need to have a kind of uh, uh, protection against uh, corrosion or we need to also prepare material where where can be protected, where can be resisted all sort of things. Now, if I consider materials, this is coming under this alloying compositions, it is coming under compositions one particular field of material tetrahedron, microstructure which is coming under structure again. Now, this stress is basically a kind of uh, factor which can come under processing or performance. Okay. So, processing sometimes we do use rolling forging, so we need to put stress. Performance means we do need to pro hold some load, their stress part is coming up. Now, when this particular structure, so that means the structure is made out of this particular uh, material alloying composition, microstructure stress and with intended with some properties which will be needed for performing some duties. Now, this particular material is exposed to the environment and our environment is uh, does have such things which can degrade the material. For example, if I consider this part, this part, this section, you see we have air and gas environment where temperature is a factor, okay, sorry for the spelling mistake, temperature is a factor, humidity which is nothing but H2O content, PO2 of course, oxygen concentration is there. Then of course, there could be another factor which is CO2, CO2 is also available. Now, these kind of gases and environments they have uh, many a times have negative effect on that material performance like atmospheric corrosion of iron objects. Now, coming to surface condition, yes sir I will come to that particular surface condition little later. Now, coming to aqueous environment, many a times that particular material or structure is either uh, in the soil or in the water medium or in the chemicals. So, that means that aqueous environment comes into play and whenever we come to aqueous environment, we have temperature, we have of course, the H plus ion concentration or OH plus, plus ion, OH, OH minus ion concentration that time it will be called POH. Okay. So, pH, POH of course, dissolve oxygen content, chlorine ion. So, we have just given in example of chlorine ion, there could be halides, other halides for example, fluoride, all sort of halides, they are deadly towards the corrosion of metallic objects. Now, flow velocity, this is also coming in the form of a kind of corrosion aspects you might have heard of, heard about cavitation. The cavitation is a serious kind of damage happens due to a change in pressure in the during operation of impellers, pumps, all those stuffs. So, their flow velocity also plays a role. For example, a pipeline if the pipeline for example, I am just giving an example, if a pipeline is like this, pipeline is like this, that time if water is flowing like this and that water contain, contains suspended particles, this velocity can create lot of force on this particular section and then gradually this particular section will get corroded, if this corroded or eroded rather. Okay. Now, this is a kind of factor which also leads to material degradation. This is coming due to flow velocity. 
conductivity of course, if something is placed in water and that water contains a very little amount of conducting ions apart from of course, a little uh, uh, hydrogen ion and OH ion that is present because of the dissociation of H 2 O. Then that water the material would corrode little less compared to the if that particular water contains little bit of iron ion or chlorine ion. There it will be a hugely corroded. Now, coming to the soil if we see the soil part there also moisture is important factor, acidity is important factor which is H plus ion concentration, H plus ion concentration P O 2 partial pressure of oxygen even chlorine ion content there could be a possibility of bacterial attack on the materials. So, this surface condition that means, now I am coming to the surface condition, surface condition means if something is exposed to the gaseous environment or air environment and below that if it is below the soil within the soil or in the water medium or any other chemicals liquid chemicals. Now, coming to radiation this is also another factor uh, which can lead to problems on the materials. So, this is a kind of uh, a relation between materials and environments which is not a kind of very friendly relations they are always trying to attack uh, the materials. Now, corrosion part. So, if you see the corrosion uh, before let us forget about corrosion for the time being let us say how do we get iron. The iron the first generally we make it iron in blast furnace and in the blast furnace what we do it is a basically a reduction process and in that reduction process we reduce iron ore which is in the form of A F E O F E 3 O 4 or A F E 2 O 3 this kind 3 iron oxides are reduced by carbon ok. That is what we always have iron containing iron containing sorry containing carbon. That carbon presence if it is below 2 percent or 1.8 percent we call it steel and then beyond 2 percent carbon of course, in weight percent it will be called as cast iron, but this is coming from the production route which is blast furnace. Now, there we refine this reduction and then after reduction we send it to another plant which is called steel making plant where actually we do oxidation because once we form iron from blast furnace it is generally called pig iron that pig iron contains many impurities and those impurities are to be taken care of or removed by oxidation that means, by oxidizing those particular uh, impurities we take we remove them from the metal and then we get steel which contains low carbon and then that steel is taken to a milling process means either rolling mill or forge products will get lot of iron objects. Now, that those iron objects are exposed to environment in the form of structures, in the form of uh, utensils, in the form of many other applications. And then we see that gradually that iron is again turning into red rust and interestingly the red rust has nothing but these three oxides, mainly these oxides F E 2 O 3. So, what is happening? It is basically coming from rust and then again we are turning to rust. So, it is a natural process we cannot stop corrosion because this rust formation that means, when the reaction happens with air moisture and oxygen then the rust forms and this process is thermodynamically a feasible process. In fact, this process we need to spend a lot of energy because thermodynamically this is stable phase. So, in order to get iron from iron oxide we need to spend energy, we need to reduce, we need to have lot of other factors, but from this to this is a natural process. So, the corrosion is a natural process, so natural process cannot be stopped, it will happen. So, what we can do? We can control it. Okay. So, when we control what do we mean by control? We mean control 
that means we can prevent corrosion rather we can reduce corrosion to a great extent okay so that's the essence of studying corrosion so we have to reduce or we have to control corrosion stopping corrosion is out of question now coming to definition there are two definitions one is practical definition if we see the practical definition the tendency of a metal to revert to its natural state which relates to if you see the previous slide so we are taking iron from iron oxide now we are reverting iron to iron oxide so the second process is natural process the first process is energy consuming process so this loss of uh, and of course when we do that when we have this of course there will be loss of mass and loss of money so this is a practicality in it the tendency of a metal to revert to its native state native state means what iron oxide or iron ions those are native states scientific definition yes when we talk about scientific definition we have uttered this word in, in some cases electrochemical degradation of metal as a result of reaction with its environment now here interestingly we are using electrochemical we are not using chemical remember that whenever we talk about corrosion related corrosion kind of degradation corrosion is of course a degradation wear is of course a degradation but when we talk about corrosion that time we must consider that the metal is reacting with its environment electrochemically that means there is a formation of metal ions so metal from metallic from atom it will go into the ions that is the scientific definition of corrosion now coming to definition of corrosion still continue the de destructive act attack on a metal by electrochemical reaction with its environment as we have mentioned corrosion returns the metal to its oxidized state or combined state in chemical compounds that are similar or even identical to the materials from which the metals are extracted so in this particular definition we are combining both practicality as well as the scientific part of it the first part which is the attack on a metal by electrochemical reaction with its environment is the scientific part and the second part is basically the corrosion returns the metal to its native condition okay so this this actually combines both now since we have talk, we have we have started talking about electrochemical reaction gradually we will see that we will getting into the electrochemistry. So, now let us see this aqueous corrosion of zinc in 2 per in, in HCl which is a dilute HCl. Now, I would go to let us get to the aspect of zinc corrosion. Let us say we start with this particular thing zinc corrosion in dilute HCl. Now, if we have a kind of container and in that container if we put a bar of zinc bar of zinc this is zinc and we have HCl here, this is dilute and once we put in zinc you will see that there are bubbles formation on the zinc surfaces and those bubbles are coming out and there will be vigorous bubble formation and if we take this particular bubble for example, you encapsulate this particular section and then take this bubble and then finally, you uh, burn a matchstick you will see that it gets burnt. Okay. So, now this particular gas which is coming out this gas is nothing but H 2 O gas. Now, if we see the reaction the reaction is zinc plus H C L equal to zinc C L 2 plus H 2 
and if we balance it, this is the balanced one. Now, we wondered that where is this electrochemistry taking place? That means, we have said that electrochemical reaction must happen, because zinc is, is in metal condition, metallic condition and now it is going in the form of zinc chloride and this zinc chloride is actually zinc is dissolving in the form of zinc chloride and zinc chloride will dissolve in that particular solution and hydrogen gas is coming out. But if we break this particular reaction into two parts, you would definitely see that yes, there are electrochemical reactions. Now, if I look at zinc, now if we take two electron out of zinc, it goes to zinc plus 2, 2 plus ions. And now, since this two electron is coming out from zinc atom, these two electrons need to be taken up because charge cannot remain unbalanced. So, now there are HCl in that HCl you have H plus plus Cl minus if we dissociate HCl. So, these H plus will take up one electron and form H and if we consider two H plus ion. So, it is plus H it is forming H 2. So, two atomic hydrogen will combine each other and then form H 2 gas. Now, if I see this reaction, this reaction is nothing but anodic reaction or we call it oxidation reaction. And this reaction we call it cathodic reaction and or reduction reaction. Now, whenever there is anodic reaction or oxidation reaction, it talks about material degradation. So, that means, zinc atom is going into solution. So, that means, this zinc rod is gradually losing zinc. So, it is a degradation and this degradation is happening because of this electrochemical reaction, because this reaction is electrochemical reaction. And these two electrons which have been released by zinc, they are taken up by two hydrogen atom and forming hydrogen gas. So, now you see in this entire reaction, we have two electrochemical reactions taking place, one is anodic, another one is cathodic. Now, question is these two electrons, how would it move to the side of cathodic reaction? Electron must flow through a conductor, so it is flowing. So, for example, let us say this small segment if I zoom it, so this is the zoom part of this and this side zinc plus plus ion is forming. So, the two electron this is the metal side and this is the solution side. Two electron is released to the metal and now here let us say hydrogen is taking up electron and forming hydrogen gas. So, this two electron is flowing through this conductor and in this in this electrolyte which is also called solution we call it electrolyte there zinc ion and there are chlorine ion they are combining and forming zinc chloride so now in order to have this entire reaction we have four components what are those four components? One component is anodic reaction, where anodic reaction happens, we call it anode, where cathodic reaction happens, we call it cathode. So, these are two components, this is second component. Then, where the electron transfer is taking place, we call it 
conductor and of course, there is one more component which is electrolyte. For example, if there is no electrolyte, these reactions cannot take place. So, this electrolyte is this is third component and this is fourth component. So, now for this particular zinc corrosion through this electrochemical reactions, we must satisfy this condition that there must be four parts. One part is anode, second part is cathode, these two are forming electrodes and then one part is third part is conductor and fourth part is electrolyte. So, this all four must be there. Like that if I see the iron part, now iron corrosion, there iron of course, if it needs to corrode it has to form ions. So, now how can it form ion? It can lose two electrons and then go to plus 2 or 2 plus as we are putting this convention 2 plus. So, this particular ion would then react with H 2 O and oxygen. So, now then this will form F E O H hole 2 and if we try to write the complete reaction, then it becomes two H hole two. Now, question is this anodic reaction is of course there. Now, where is cathodic reaction taking place? We need to know that. And for that, we need to also consider one more cathodic reaction is O 2 plus 2 H 2 O plus 4 E equal to 4 O H minus. So, this is anode or anodic reaction this is cathodic reaction or cathode electrolyte is nothing but this moisture becomes electrolyte. These happens when a metal object iron object is exposed to environment this H 2 O becomes the electrolyte. Now, question is this is cathodic reaction of course, the electron where it flows that electron flow would happen these happens on the anode these happens on the cathode and electron flows through the iron object. Okay, that becomes conductor and this becomes electrolyte. Now, in the previous case also we could see that zinc itself act is acting as cathode as well as anode because the cathodic as well as anodic reactions are taking place on zinc surface. Here also the anodic surface as well as cathodic surface iron is behaving in the same matter if iron becomes cathode as well as anode. Now, question is we will not be able to tell specifically this part is cathode and this part is anode because in the beginning it will be all statistically distributed reactions. That means, cathode well only we can say where the cathodic reactions happens anode where the anodic reactions happens. So, but if I try to see the formation of this it also follows the same route that means electrochemistry and iron is dissolving by forming iron ion and there is the cathodic reaction which is oxygen reduction this oxygen is reducing and of course, cathodic reaction is nothing but the reduction and in case of zinc, zinc ion is forming anodic reaction and hydrogen ion is getting reduced and forming hydrogen. Okay. So, that becomes my entire situation for iron corrosion as well as zinc corrosion we follow electrochemical routes. We would continue with this particular aspects that cathode, anode, electrode as well as conductor and electrolyte. This is the essence of or the backbone of corrosion subject. Now, before we end this lecture 2, I would like to just tell you that 
of course, corrosion is deadly, but some cases corrosion of course, helps. Now, let us give some examples. You would be surprised to see that some of the cases, yes, the corrosion actually helps. One classic example is, let us come to this battery. battery. Now, in the battery, we of course, have corrosive reactions. Now, carbon rod which is acting as cathode, zinc case, casing is acting as anode and then because zinc case is corroding, it, re it is releasing electron and that electron is flowing through this particular electro external circuit, external conductor and that is what we are getting a glowing light. So, the battery is designed on the basis of corrosion because, because zinc is corroding that is what we are getting electrons and that is available for uh, glowing lights. Now, this is another example the microstructures which is the bread and butter of material scientists because these microstructures are needed to correlate property and structures. Now, another example is porous silver, there are porous gold which are very good catalyst, they are, they are formed by de-alloying. For example, zinc silver or gold silver if we formalize then specifically and then we can take out silver in case of gold silver or in we can take out zinc in case of silver zinc alloy and then form porous network like this. And finally, I come to this example which is called galvanic zinc application. Galvanization is a popular method where we protect iron structures. This also is the corrosion is the basis of galvanic corrosion, galvanic galvanization or galvanic zinc application. Zinc corrodes and zinc becomes my sacrificial anode and then iron is protected, iron becomes my cathode. So, at the end let me end this lecture by saying our aim is to understand thermodynamics and kinetics of corrosion, different forms and reasons of corrosion and of course, finally, we would look at protection and preventive mechanisms for corrosion. Thank you very much, let us stop today, thank you. Thank you.